Hi, I'm Black Bright and I'm a YouTube vlogger and I like to think that I'm my videos raise understanding and tolerance. So today I'm going to be talking about um, the difference, what is the difference between a UK citizen on the dole and an overstayer? When you think, and it'll all make sense in a minute. When you think about before, before 2016, before the hostile environment policy came out, overstayers were allowed to work legally in the country as independent contractors. They were allowed to be agency workers. They Now they call them zero contract, but it was all legal. It was all above board. So they could um, look after their family. They could get married. They could pay rent. They could pay any, you know, national insurance. They could pay their taxes and they lived a comfortable life. So, but since the hostile environment policies put a stop to all of that, they've been forced into poverty. And why am I linking that with those people on the dole? The reason I'm doing that is because I don't know how many of you remember when um, people on the dole, they were, their rent was paid, their electricity bills and gas bills were paid, their council tax was paid, the dentist bill was paid, um, nursery was subsidised, they were given money extra money for food on top of that they get child benefit which everybody still get but they didn't have to they didn't have they didn't need a penny and what happened is when they came out with the universal credit about three or four years ago they decided that they would give these people who had been on the dole generationally um, a lump sum every month and when these people saw the lump sum, these are people who had all their needs taken care of. Whatever money they had, they could spend, were given a lump sum out of which they would have to pay their rent, their council tax, their bills, their, 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 um, their nursery fees, all of that stuff. And of course, they didn't have that discipline. So when they saw this lot of, when they saw this load of money, they just thought, oh, I think I'll go on holiday. Oh, I think I'll buy that car I've always wanted. Oh, I think I'll go shopping, do some extra shopping this week. Oh, you know, I've seen some clothes. I've seen some clothes in the shop down the road. I think I'll go and buy some of them. Get some stuff for the kids, blah, blah, blah. Ah, oh, the rent can wait. We'll wait. We won't worry about the rent. Lots of people, lots of the people on the dole didn't pay their rent didn't realise that a condition of getting that universal credit meant that they were responsible for their rent being paid. No excuses. As a result, a lot of them are homeless. The rug was pulled from under their feet. The same way the rug was pulled from under the overstayer's feet. At one point, they were able to enjoy a, a reasonable standard of living make an earning and live a decent life and then the rug was pulled from under their feet and they was left to their own devices. I don't think that's right. I mean, you know, you can't blame the individuals when the government was enabling it. The government enabled it. And to have a sudden brainwave that says, oh, no, um, this we, we've been enabling these overstairs for all these years and all these illegal immigrants. We're going to stop them from living. We're, that's what they're saying. We're going to stop them from living. We are going to make their lives hell so that they cannot live in the UK anymore. That's why they was, that's why it was called hostile. But similarly, they did the same with those U UK citizens who were on the dole. They pulled the rug from under their feet and left them defenseless. Now, you know, you can, I, I hear people say all the time, those bloody immigrants, get rid of them. They have no tolerance for immigrants at all. I hear it amongst people I, I'm around a lot of the time. They'll say, those bloody immigrants, they get on me nerves. I don't want them buying me house. I don't want them doing this. I don't want them doing that. And then they, they talk to me as though I'm not black. And if they do remember, they're like, they laugh it off and they say, oh, well, I don't look on you as an immigrant. One, one, I saw one woman and she was talking to this woman 
well, a white woman was talking to this black woman. She talked to her about 10 minutes. Anyway, after you stood talking to her about 10 minutes, she came over to me and I said, who was that? And she goes, oh, I don't know. I said, but you were talking to her, talking to her for about 10 minutes. She said, oh, yeah, you know, I, I don't know her name. I said, oh, so you don't know her then? She goes, oh, yeah, I've known her for two years. So I said, but how come you don't know her name? She goes, oh, they all look alike, don't they? They all look alike. Like, I'm just like, you know, people need to notice differences, need to take interest in people and know differences because that is why when um, innocent people are found guilty because if you don't know one from another and they're in a lineup, you're going to, you're going to choose anyone, aren't you? You're going to say they all look alike. I don't know what they look like. You're not going to realise that because you haven't paid attention, that a, a guilt, an innocent person can be found guilty. And that's what happens with racial profiling. When the police stop people just because they're black, not because they, they suspect them of having something, which is what the reason why they're supposed to suspect them, is because they look a certain way. And then they put them all, they tar them all with the same brush. They don't know a black American from a black Canadian, from a black um, Caribbean, from a black English, from a black African. They don't know the difference. They don't know we eat different foods. They don't know we have different religions. They don't know we, we dress differently. We have different languages. They just think they're black. They're all the same. And with Asians and people from Pakistan, people... Back in the day, they used to call them all Pakis. They didn't realise that it was two separate cultures. One's Hindu, one's Muslim. They just bang you all up in the same kind of, put you all under the same umbrella. But until, until people are interested enough to know about people's differences, we are going to have problems. And we are going to put all overstayers under the same umbrella and say they're all criminals, they're murderers, they're all drug dealers. When they're not, you have hard working, you have hard working um, overstays, the same way as you have hard working citizens. You have those who are on the dole and who milk it. And you have, well, it's not so easy to milk it now, but you have, in the day you had citizens who were hard working and you had those citizens who were on the dole milking it. All I'm saying is that, you know, you can't tar everybody with the same brush and not because overstairs are over here that they all come over to milk the doll and to use your nhs and to take all your jobs those self-contractors they were actually some of them were employers and they would actually give people jobs and they were self-sufficient of course you've got you know those illegal immigrants who are traffickers who are murderers, who are criminals, who exploit situations, who indulge in sham marriages, who have kids just to stay in the country. Of course you have that. There's good and bad in everyone. So I'm just saying, it's not, they're not all the same. And it's not going to make a difference to you who has, who has that kind of intolerance about immigrants. It's not going to make a difference. But all I'm saying is that, you know, there is a difference. There's good and bad in everyone. And that's all for now. Bye bye.